Jean Thompson stood in front of her fifth grade class on the very first day of school in the fall and told the children a lie. Like most teachers, she looked at her pupils and said that she loved them all the same, that she would treat them all alike. And that was impossible because there was in front of her, slumped in his seat on the third row, was a boy named Teddy Thompson had watched Teddy the year before and noticed he didn't play well with the other children, that his clothes were unkept, and that he constantly needed a bath. And Teddy was unpleasant. It got to the point during the first few months that she would actually take delight in marking his papers with a broad red pen, making bold X's. Because Teddy was a sullen little boy, no one else seemed to enjoy him either. At the school where Mrs. Thompson taught, she was required to review each child's records and put Teddy's off until last. When she opened his file, she was in for a surprise. His first grade teacher wrote, Teddy is a bright, inquisitive child with a ready laugh. He does his work neatly and has good manners. He is a joy to be around. His second grade teacher wrote, Teddy is an excellent student, well liked by his classmates, but he is troubled because his mother has a terminal illness and life at home must be a struggle. His third grade teacher wrote, Teddy continues to work hard, but his mother's death has been hard on him. He tries to do his best, but his father doesn't show much interest and his home life will soon affect him if some steps aren't soon taken. Teddy's fourth grade teacher wrote, Teddy is withdrawn and doesn't show much interest in school. He doesn't have many friends and sometimes sleeps in class. He is tardy and could become a problem. By now, Mrs. Thompson realized the problem, but Christmas was coming fast. It was all she could do with the school play and all until the day before the holidays began and she was suddenly forced to focus on Teddy Stollard. Her children brought her presents all in gay ribbon and bright paper, except for Teddy's, which was clumsily wrapped in the heavy brown paper. Mrs. Thompson took pains to open it in the middle of the other presents. Some of the children started to laugh when she found a rhinestone bracelet with some of the stones missing and a bottle that was one quarter full of cologne. She stifled the children's laughter when she exclaimed how pretty the bracelet was, putting it on and dabbing some of the perfume behind the other wrists. Teddy Stollard stayed behind just long enough to say, Mrs. Thompson, today you smell just like my mom used to. After the children left, she cried for at least an hour. On that very day, she quit teaching reading, writing, and speaking. Instead, she began to teach children. Jean paid particular attention to one they all called Teddy. As she worked with him, his mind seemed to come alive. The more she encouraged him, the faster he responded. On the days there would be an important test, Mrs. Thompson would remember that cologne. By the end of the year, he had become one of the smartest children in the class. And, well, he had become Also, her pet, who had once vowed to love all of her children exactly the same. A year later, she found a note under the door from Teddy telling her that all the teachers he had had in elementary school, she was his favorite. Six years went by before she got another note from Teddy. He then wrote that he had finished high school, third in his class, and she was still his favorite teacher of all time. Four years after that, she got another letter saying that while things had been tough at times, he'd stayed in school and stuck with it and would graduate from college with the highest of honors. He assured Mrs. Thompson she was still his favorite teacher. Then four years passed and yet another letter came. This time he explained that after he had got his bachelor's degree, he decided to go a little further. The letter explained that she was still his favorite teacher, but that now his name was a little longer. The letter was signed Thomas F. Stoddard, M.D. The story doesn't end there. You see, there is yet another letter that spring. Teddy said he'd met this girl and was to be married. He explained that his father had died a couple of years ago, and he was wondering, well, if Mrs. Thompson 
might agree to sit in the pew, usually reserved for the mother of the groom. You have to decide yourself whether or not she wore that bracelet, the one with several rhinestones missing. But I bet on that special day, Jean Thompson smelled like, well, just like she smelled many years before on that last day of school before the Christmas holiday began. That was something, wasn't it? You never can tell what type of impact you may have on another's life by your actions or lack of action. Sometimes just a smile on the street to a passing stranger can make a difference we could never imagine. The story is entitled, The Last Day of School by Roy Exum.